Hebrew astronomy refers to any astronomy written in Hebrew or by Hebrew speakers, or translated into Hebrew. It also includes an unusual type of literature from the Middle Ages, works written in Arabic but transcribed in the Hebrew alphabet. It includes a range of genres from the earliest astronomy and cosmology contained in the Bible, mainly the Tanakh, Hebrew Bible or Old Testament, to Jewish religious works like the Talmud and very technical works. Some Persian and Arabian traditions ascribe the invention of astronomy to Adam, Seth, and Enoch. Some scholars suggest that the signs of the zodiac, or Maseroth, and the names of the stars associated with them originally were created as a mnemonic device by these forefathers of the Hebrews to tell the story of the Bible. Historian Flavius Josephus says Seth and his offspring preserved ancient astronomical knowledge in pillars of stone. Stars and constellations Only a few stars and constellations are named individually in the Hebrew Bible, and their identification is not certain. The clearest references include Kessel, Kessiel usually understood to be Orion, a giant angel. Kima, Kima which may be the Pleiades, Aldebaran, Arcturus, or Sirius. Ash or Aish Azaz, possibly the Hyades, Arcturus or Ursa Major, or even the evening star Venus when seen at dusk. Mizurim, Mizrim which may be Ursa Major and Ursa Minor, or a synonym for Mazalot, in which case it would refer to the planets or the constellations of the zodiac. <laughs> planets Only two planets are named in the Tanakh. The term Kion in Amos chapter 5 verse 26 is thought by some authors to refer to Saturn, closely related to the Assyrian Kevan or Kaiwanu. Venus, called Meliket ha Samayim, Meliket ha Samayim, the Queen of Heaven, in Jeremiah chapter 7 verse 18 and elsewhere. That the latter means Venus is shown by the cakes which are said to have been baked for her. Among the Assyrians and Babylonians, the cake offerings were called the bread of Ishtar. Helel, Elel the son of the morning, ben Sahar ben Sahar in Isaiah chapter 14 verse 12, is also thought to be the morning star Venus when visible before dawn. This identification is better known to many English speakers as its Latin name, Lucifer, the light bearer. The Talmud The information preserved in the Talmud does not emanate from one homogeneous system, as they are the accumulations of at least four centuries, and are traceable to various authors in the Jerusalem and Babylonian Talmuds, among whom some were inclined to mysticism. <laughs> Astronomy as a religious study The high value of astronomical knowledge is already demonstrated by the astronomical section of the Book of Enoch about 72 to 80 BC, as well as by such sayings as those of Eliezer Hizma about 100, a profound mathematician, who could count the drops in the ocean, H.O.R. 10a, and who declared that the ability to compute the solstice and the calendar is the desert auxiliaries of wisdom, A flat, E. 18. Among the sciences that Johannan ben Zakkai mastered was a knowledge of the solstices and the calendar, i.e., the ability to compute the course of the sun and the moon Suk, 28a. Later writers declare that, "...to him who can compute the course of the sun and the revolution of the planets and neglects to do so, may be applied the words of the prophet Isa, v. 12, they regard not the work of the Lord, neither consider the operation of his hands." To pay attention to the course of the sun and to the revolution of the planets is a religious injunction, for such is the import of the words doi, iv. 6. This is your wisdom and your understanding in the sight of the nations. Shab. 75a. Despite the general importance and religious significance attached to astronomy in the Holy Land, no notable developments in astronomy happened there. The starry heavens of the land of Israel interested the Jews as creations of God and as means to determine the holidays, but for a better knowledge of them the Jews were undoubtedly indebted to the Babylonians and their Hellenic pupils, as evidenced by the foreign term gematria used to designate the computation of the calendar. Probably this word represents a transposition of the Greek grammatia meaning, 
arithmetic, mathematics. Most of the observations of a scientific nature were transmitted by Samuel 250, who attended the schools of the Babylonians, and who claimed to possess as exact a knowledge of the heavenly regions as of the streets of his own city Nahardia. Certain rules must nevertheless have existed, because Rabban Gamaliel about 100, who applied the lunar tablets and telescope, relied for authority upon such as had been transmitted by his paternal ancestors er. RHE. 58b, Bab. RH 25A. Topic: <inaudible> Menorah and the seven classical planets and lunar phases. The number seven is a recurring numerical theme in the Hebrew Scriptures. The menorah's seven lamps on four branches correspond to the lights of the seven classical planets: the Moon, Mercury, Venus, the Sun, fourth, Mars, Jupiter, and Saturn. Hebrew mysticism recognized their great importance. Therefore, along with the four lunar phases being slightly over seven days approximately 7 .4 days each, the number seven was held in very high regard. The Torah reflects this with Bereshit Book of Genesis chapter 1 verse 1 being seven words and 28 letters 7 by 4 in its original Hebrew. This is God's signature. And God said, Let there be lights in the heavens to separate the day from the night, and let them serve as signs to mark seasons, days, years and festivals. The fourth day of seven. Genesis chapter 1 verse 14. Topic. Conceptions of the heavens and earth In the Talmud, as in the Bible, the heavens and the earth designate the two borders of the universe, with the heavens a covering over the earth. One Tanaitic authority believed that the sphere consists of a strong and firm plate two or three fingers in thickness, always lustrous and never tarnishing, another estimates the diameter of this plate as one-sixth of the sun's diurnal journey, while another, a Babylonian, estimates it at 1,000 parasangs approximately, 3,728 miles. Yet another authority states that the diameter of the firmament is equal to the distance covered in 50 or 500 years and this is true also of the earth and the large sea to home upon which it rests. The distance of the firmament from the earth is a journey of 500 years, a distance equivalent to the diameter of the firmament, through which the sun must saw its way in order to become visible. The firmament, according to some, consists of fire and water, and, according to others, of water only, while the stars consist of fire. East and west are at least as far removed from each other as is the firmament from the earth. Heaven and earth kiss each other. At the horizon and between the water above and that below there are but two or three fingerbreadths. The earth rests upon water and is encompassed by it. According to other conceptions the earth is supported by one, seven, or twelve pillars. These rest upon water, the water upon mountains, the mountains upon the wind, and the wind upon the storm, though this could easily be metaphoric. There is also mentioned the terrestrial globe, Kadar. Topic: <laughs> Chronology and the Maseroth. Chronology was a chief consideration in the study of astronomy among the Jews. Sacred time was based upon the cycles of the sun and the moon. The Talmud identified the twelve constellations of the Maseroth zodiac with the twelve months of the Hebrew calendar. The correspondence of the constellations with their names in Hebrew and the months is as follows Aries Tele, Nisan Taurus, Shor, Iyar Gemini, Teomim, Savan Cancer, Sartan, Tammuz Leo, Ari, Avenue Virgo, Betula, Alul Libra, Mosnayim, Tishrei Scorpio, Akrab, Heshvan Sagittarius Keshet, Kislev Capricorn, Gedi, Tevet Aquarius, Delai, Shvat Pisces, Degim, Adder The first three are in the east, the second three in the south, the third three in the west, and the last three in the north, and all are attendant on the sun. According to one account, in the first three months spring, the sun travels in the south, in order to melt the snow, in the fourth through sixth months summer, it travels directly above the earth, in order to ripen the fruit, in the seventh through ninth months autumn, it travels above the sea, in order to absorb the waters, and in the last three months winter, it travels over the desert, in order that the grain may not dry up and wither. 
According to one conception, Aries, Leo, and Sagittarius face northward, Taurus, Virgo, and Capricornus westward, Gemini, Libra, and Aquarius southward, and Cancer, Scorpio, and Pisces eastward. Some scholars identified the twelve signs of the zodiac with the twelve tribes of Israel. The four solstices the Tekafo of Nisan, Tammuz, Tishrei, and Tevet are often mentioned as determining the seasons of the year and there are occasional references to the rising place of the sun er. 56a. Sometimes six seasons of the year are mentioned Gen. R. XXXIV. 11, and reference is often made to the receptacle of the sun, Narthekian by means of which the heat of the orb is mitigated Gen. R. V. 6, and elsewhere. The moon was also a part of the calendar. The moon begins to shine on the first of the month, its light increases until the fifteenth, when the disc discos is full, from the fifteenth to the thirtieth it wanes, and on the thirtieth it is invisible. X. Rxv. 26. The heavenly bodies and their motions Two different cosmologies can be found in the Talmud. One is a flat earth cosmology resembling descriptions of the world in the mythology of the ancient Near East. The other, is a geocentric model, according to which the stars move about the earth. According to Aristotle, Ptolemy, and other philosophers among the Greeks, the stars have no motion of their own, being firmly attached to spheres whose center is the earth. A passage in the Talmud, the Berita Pesahim 94b contrasts the pagan view with that of Jewish sages. The learned of Israel say, The sphere stands firm, and the planets revolve. The learned of the nations say, The sphere moves, and the planets stand firm. The learned of Israel say, The sun moves by day beneath the firmament, and by night above the firmament. The learned of the nations say, The sun moves by day beneath the firmament, and by night beneath the earth. The learned also interpret this quote as being a footstool and a now wicked memory. Get under my feet, is what he said. Gather yourself unto me and be not of your own interpretation is what was commanded to mankind by God. The way of the ram, son, Osiris worship, was removed, yet as of Yahweh, Yahuwah, Jehovah. Therefore, we give glory to itself, one far greater than the greatest things we know. The sun has 365 windows through which it emerges, 182 in the east, 182 in the west, and one in the middle, the place of its first entrance. The course described by it in a year is traversed by the moon in 30 days. The solar year is longer by 11 days than the lunar year er. RHE. 58A. The sun completes its course in 12 months, Jupiter, in 12 years, Saturn, in 30 years, Venus and Mars, in 480 years Gen. R. X. 4. However, an objection is raised here in a gloss against the last mentioned number. King Antoninus asked the patriarch why the sun rises in the east and sets in the west. At the time of the deluge it traveled in the opposite direction San, 91b, 108b. Every 28 years it returns to its original point of departure, and on Tuesday evening of the spring solstice it is in opposition with Saturn, although Plato maintained that the sun and planets never return to the place whence they started. This is the cycle of 28 years BER. 59b, the moon cycle of 19 years may have been meant in the Targ. Er, Gen, I. 14. The names of the five planets, one star and one moon planetary satellite are Shabbatai Subti, Saturn Meaning, the restful one, whose name is parallel to that of the Sabbath day, the seventh day, the day of rest. Esoterically, Saturn embodies time itself. In the midst of time's passage, Saturn remains still and silent, drawing all endeavors to a close. Zedek ZDQ, Jupiter Meaning, righteousness, as Jupiter is the embodiment of divine influx. Ma'adam Madim, Mars Meaning, the red one. Hama HMA, the sun. Meaning, the hot one. Kokivet Kupt, Noga Nuke or Kokov Noga Kwikabi Nuke, Venus. Meanings, the she planet. The bright one. Or, the bright planet. Respectively. Kokov Kwikabi, Mercury. Meaning, the planet. Since Mercury is the principle of planetary influence, in and of itself. The mercurial principle is that of multiplorency. It embodies our means of adaptation, and represents the many facets of existence. 
in being deemed simply as the planet, Mercury is presented as a blank slate, an open-ended modality of being. Levana LBNH, the moon, meaning the white one. In many languages, the names of the days of the week are derived from the names of the seven planets. Each day was consecrated to the particular planet that ruled during the early hours of the morning. While Talmudists were familiar with the planets and their characteristics in astrology, they opposed their worship, so weekdays are not named in Hebrew besides for the Sabbath. Instead they are referred to by number. Topic: <laughs> Fixed stars and comets. The Milky Way is called Fire Stream, a name borrowed from Daniel v. 10 Neher di Nur, where it may possibly have had the same signification. The statement is also made that the sting of Scorpio may be seen lying in the Milky Way. Samuel said, We have it as a tradition that no comet ever passed across the face of Orion. Kessel. For if this should happen the earth would be destroyed. When his hearers objected to this statement, saying, Yet we see that this occurs. Samuel replied, It only appears so, for the comet passes either above or below the star. Possibly also its radiance passes, but not its body. Again, Samuel says, But for the warmth of Orion, the Earth could not exist, because of the frigidity of Scorpio. Furthermore, Orion lies near Taurus, with which the warm season begins. The comet, because of its tail, is called Kokhba de Shabbat, Rodstar. Joshua ben Ananiah about 100, declared that a star appears once every seventy years and leads mariners astray, hence they should at such time lay in a larger store of provisions. Rapaport endeavors to prove that the path of Halley's comet had been computed by a wise rabbi. Samuel said, I know all the paths of heaven, but nothing of the nature of the comet. The following biblical names of constellations are mentioned and explained: Pleiades, biblically known as the seven stars, a cluster of about a hundred stars, and for the much disputed, its equally obscure Aramaic equivalent, Ms. M. Syriac, is given. Topic: <laughs> Post-Talmudic times. With the revival of Hellenistic astronomy which took place during the Islamic Golden Age, Jews were intimately connected, and the Almagest is said to have been translated by Sahal ibn Tabari as early as AD 800, while one of the earliest independent students of astronomy among the Arabs was Mashallah ibn Athari Jews seem to have been particularly concerned with the formation of astronomical tables of practical utility to astronomers. Sindh ben Ali about 830 was one of the principal contributors to the tables drawn up under the patronage of the Caliph al-Mamun. No less than twelve Jews were concerned in the tables of Toledo, drawn up about AD 1080 under the influence of Ahmad ibn Zayd, and the celebrated Alfonsini tables were executed under the superintendence of Isaac ibn Sid, while Jews were equally concerned in the less known tables of Peter IV of Aragon. Isaac al-Hadab compiled astronomical tables from those of al-Rakam, al-Batam, and ibn al-Khamid. Joseph ibn Wakr drew up tables of the period 720 HEG, while Mordecai Comtino and Mattathia Delacrut commented upon the Persian and Paris tables respectively, the latter were commented upon also by Farisal Bodarel. Abraham ibn Ezra translated al-Mitani's canons of the Khwarizmi tables, and in his introduction tells a remarkable story of a Jew in India who helped Jacob ben Tariq to translate the Indian astronomical tables according to the Indian cycle of 432,000 years. Other tables were compiled by Jacob ben Makir, Emmanuel ben Jacob, Jacob ben David ben Yom Tab Pool Solomon ben Elijah from the Persian tables, and Abraham Zakuto of Salamanca about 1515. The earliest to treatise of astronomy in Hebrew on a systematic plan was Abraham bar Haya, who wrote at Marseille, about AD 1134. Discussions on astronomical points, especially with regard to the spheres, and disputed points in calculating the calendar occur frequently in the works of Judah ha-Levi, Abraham ibn Ezra, and Maimonides, while a new system of astronomy is contained in the Wars of the Lord Milhamad Adonai, of Levi ben Gershon. Jews were especially involved as translators. 
Moses ibn Tibbin translated from the Arabic Habir ben Afla's acute criticisms of the Ptolemaic system, an anticipation of Copernicus, and thus brought them to the notice of Maimonides. Ibn al-Haytham's Arabic Compendium of Astronomy was a particular favorite of Jewish astronomers, besides being translated into Spanish by Don Abraham Fakin, it was turned into Hebrew by Jacob ben Makir and Solomon ibn Pater Cohen and into Latin by Abraham de Balmes. Other translations from the Arabic were by Jacob Anatoly, Moses Galeno, and Callinimus ben Callinimus, bringing the Greco-Arabic astronomers to the notice of Western Europe. Jacob Anatoly, for example, translated into Hebrew both the Almagest and Averroes compendium of it, and this Hebrew version was itself translated into Latin by Jacob Christman. Other translators from the Hebrew into Latin were Abraham de Balmes and Callinimus ben David of Naples, while David Callinimus ben Jacob, Ephraim Mizrahi, and Solomon Abigdor translated from the Latin into Hebrew. The well-known family of translators, the Ibn Tibbans, may be especially mentioned. In practical astronomy Jewish work was even more effective. Jacob ben Makir, who is known also as Prophet Tibbon, appears to have been professor of astronomy at Montpelier, about 1300, and to have invented a quadrant to serve as a substitute for the astrolabe. Levi ben Gershon was also the inventor of an astronomical instrument, and is often quoted with respect under the name of Leon de Bagnolas. Bonnet de Lattes also invented an astronomical ring. Abraham Zacuto ben Samuel was professor of astronomy at Salamanca, and afterward astronomer royal to Emmanuel of Portugal, who had previously been advised by a Jewish astronomer, Rabbi Joseph Vicino, a pupil of Abraham Zacuto, as to the project put before him by Christopher Columbus, who, in carrying it out, made use of Zacuto's almanac and tables. With the Renaissance, Jewish work in astronomy lost in importance, as Europe could refer to the Greek astronomers without it. The chief name connected with the revival of astronomical studies on the Baltic is that of David Gans of Prague d. 1613, who corresponded with Kepler and Tycho Brahe. He was acquainted with the Copernican system, but preferred that of Ptolemy, while as late as 1714 David Nieto of London still stood out against the Copernican system. Other Jewish astronomers of note are H. Goldschmidt 1802 who discovered 14 asteroids. Wilhelm Beer (1797–1850), the brother of Meyerbeer, drew one of the most accurate maps of the Moon of his time. Moritz Loewy (1833) was director of the Paris Observatory and the inventor of the Code or Elbow Telescope, by which the stars may be observed without bending the neck back and without leaving the comfortable observatory. Equals <laughs> equals see also.